Is the 2024 election a preview of hell? I think it might be. Let me explain myself as we watch our culture stray further every day. Howdy, Jonathan Fiala, just putting in a quick segment this week, a short one in regards to the election and the meltdowns that are occurring from those on the left. And I found them fascinating. But before we get deep into it, how can we as Christians celebrate a Trump victory? That's a question that's going to be asked, and it's important to think about. Well, it's more than just a Trump victory. It looks like Republicans will have the House, the Senate, and the White House. That's a really good cause to celebrate. Contrary to popular belief, politics and religion are not separate. Politics are religious and religion is political. When it comes to issues like abortion, parental rights, world politics, Israel, we as Christians have a moral compass it's called the Bible. We, it's God's inspired inerrant word. And it does inform our decisions, but how can we as Christians celebrate a Trump victory? It's a question that we need to ask. Is Trump some sort of Messiah? Is he someone that we need to worship? Well, no, most Christians don't believe that contrary to what the media paints. We believe that he's just a man and he's a man that is holding a standard of morality, not necessarily the one that we as Christians would like him to hold, but he's holding a standard of morality in a world that has gone wrong. And he was the only one like that on the ballot. So that's why we voted for him. But the reactions to this can be quite telling, and some of them are even quite violent. How did we get here? How did we get here? What in the Alice in Wonderland nightmares is going on right now? All I can say is how f dare you? If you voted for that man, if you voted for any This one looks like she's fun at parties. Kamala, and you live and you live in one of the states that it was, you know, close. Or if you didn't vote, fuck you. <laughs> this one's sad. I chose family. I chose women. I chose America. I love you. How the f is this still happening? All I've ever known politically is hatred. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. How? I'm done with you. I'm done with you and your mother and your sister. I'm just done with all of this. Ah! <laughs> This guy Why? does end up winning again. All of the people who voted for him will be like happy and they'll just be celebrating. And Absolutely. Everyone else, everyone who feels threatened by him is fucking scared. Like we're we're scared for our lives. We're scared for our friends. How dare you? So scared for our lives, scared for our friends. From what? I mean, <laughs> name me one thing. Name me one thing that Trump's gonna take away from you. One thing other than some restrictions on abortion that that's really all Kamala Harris ran on was abortion. And so that, I think that's telling for what exactly these people are, are, are seeing and what they're concerned about. Now I'll admit the first time I watched this, I, I did like the, 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 it's worth a chuckle. These people have nothing but hatred towards God towards the unborn, towards people who, who don't share in their belief in abortion nine months, even partly out of the womb. But upon a little bit of self-reflection, I realized something. These people are actually experiencing something biblical. They are weeping and gnashing their teeth at the simplest of restraint on abortion. What will they do in eternity? Sure, the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord, but many of those knees and tongues will still walk into the darkest night and the abyss of hell. I see a strange parallel being played out on the stage of this election 
to end times. Now, before we get into this, please don't misunderstand me. I don't mean to conflate Jesus Christ and Donald J. Trump. I believe that Trump is just a man, one that holds to some part of the Christian ethic imperfectly, but I believe he means to be a good man. I'm not sure if he even has a relationship with God, but in spite of his past history, he has shown that he's trying to live a moral life. And in that vein, Trump is upholding a moral stance on the issues of abortion. A weak one at that, but it is a stance that he's striking a hard line. Same with transitioning children. Same with the value of life in Israel. Jesus Christ will hold an absolute line on the underlying issue for all of these political topics. The issue of the sin nature. Trump is ultimately allowing abortion still to continue underneath his upcoming administration. But under Jesus, abortion will be abolished. It won't exist anymore. If these people whose minds are held in this hellish prison that they have created for themselves react this way, to a mild standard of morality on abortion. How are they going to react to the incarnation of truth, justice, and love when he demands that they bend their will to righteousness when they submit to him or be sent into the eternal lake of fire? It's a sobering thought. It's important to remember that we as Christians are here to build the kingdom of God. This involves discipling people within the walls of the church, sure, but we see that it extends beyond that. We need to look no further than Matthew 28. Quote, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Unto all nations. This includes the people who are anti-Trump. In America, Christians are missionaries and these leftists are our targets. These are the people that we need to win. Their mortal souls are on the line. We must remember this as we see these people writhing in their self-induced agony, no matter how ridiculous it is. And yes, it is ridiculous. It is laughable. Yes, I did laugh. We still need to remember who these people are. They are loved in the sight of God. Not what they do. God's willing that none should perish. That should be on our minds. It should sadden us. It's also important to remember that this battle has just started. Don't think just because Republicans won that the will of God is being carried out in America. This election was won by a wide coalition of voters. Many of these people were previously aligned with the Democratic Party. They joined the conservative Christians in the Republican Party to deny Kamala Harris the White House. Not because they converted. Their minds, they still are liberals. Look at RFK Jr., Elon Musk, Tulsi Gabbard. These are not conservatives. And that's all right. They're getting warmer. They're starting to see why conservatism works. We need to make sure that we remind them why they came to the conservative party. The reason is this, conservative Christian principles, conservatism in shorthand works. Leftism doesn't. We cannot allow the church to become the Republican Party and vice versa. We have to maintain our ability to be salt and light. Now, on a bright note, as per the New York Post, we can actually see that there is a cult cultural shift happening in the Latino population. We're seeing a 45% vote for Trump, whereas previously only 29% voted for him in 2016. This year, 12% of black voters voted for Trump, with only 8% having voted for him in 2016. In 2024, Asian voters supported Trump by an increase in 9% bringing to a total of 38. 
this is a break intellectually with the leftist coalition. People intellectually are beginning to realize that conservative ideas, Christian ideas ultimately do work. Now, if we can bring them to the realization of why conservative ideals work, Christian ideas work, the ideas that this nation was founded on, maybe only then can we see a spiritual revival. Conservative Christian governance in its truly biblically accurate form works. Full stop. It empowers the individual with responsibility and with consequences. It protects the weak and the innocent and builds a nation that can last because it's done to God's standards, the God who ordained nations in the first place. Leftism always fails to do any of these things well because it's a man-made construct, specifically devoid of God. We as Christians need to be aware that this is ultimately a spiritual war for souls, not an economic one, not one of law and governance, but one of God's law and God's governance. People are starting to see the value in conservatism for its economic and physical safety. That's a great thing. Now, we as Christians need to be living out the spiritual side so that they can see that too. The opportunity for revival is here, folks. We can be that salt and light. Now, the spotlight and the reins of power have been given to conservatives. Now that all of these folks who were leftists before are out of their leftist silos, maybe they can experience mere Christianity if it's on display in our lives. Now is not the time to be politically correct. Don't misunderstand me. That's not what I'm saying, but rather to be boldly like Christ. We can uphold the moral standard of the Bible without being priggish thugs, but also without compromise. We can meet folks who are in the LGBT, liberal and moderate camps who have joined the Republican movement where they are with a loving spirit and with truth. These two are synonymous. They are not mutually exclusive. This is difficult. It means being involved in these people's lives. It means volunteering, being involved in local missions, making sure that your church doesn't just minister within its own four walls, but is involved in the homeless ministry. We're involved in people's lives. We're mentoring children. We want to talk about the fatherless issue. Fatherlessness in America is an epidemic, but guess what? You can make a difference in a young man or young woman's life just by being present. These are all things that any one of us can do. What's the first step in eating the elephant? Someone asked me today, start to do what God has called you to do in your life. Don't worry about someone else. Worry about your life. Stand in holiness and stand on God's word but stand in love as Christ did. Remember, Christ never started with Christ. He always met people where they were. He fed folks. He healed folks. He met them where they were at in their culture, in their time, and in their place. And then once they got to understand who he was and how much he cared, they were ready for the gospel. Christ is our example for evangelism and discipleship. He's the perfect example. Meet people where they are at, at their needs, and God will do the work. Let us take good advantage of what may be our last chance to turn this nation to God. Many of us have been praying for revival. I hope you have too. But revival can only come to this nation when it comes to the hearts of those who call themselves by God's name. This is potentially our last chance, folks. Let's use it wisely. Make sure that we live with intentionality. Got nothing else for you. Hope you have a beautiful week. Goodbye.